first, let's talk about this crazy thing that Netflix did. Um, anybody watch the Super Bowl uh, this past week? Got a chance to see Netflix release a movie that was going to be released in theaters uh, immediately following the Super Bowl. Uh, pretty brilliant campaigning to yeah. do something like this. Great um, marketing idea. Great marketing idea. Um, something I've never seen done before. No. Um, anybody who's watched J.J. Abrams may be familiar with the Cloverfield films. Um, you've got Cloverfield, you've got 10 Cloverfield Lane, and now you've got the Cloverfield Paradox which originally was going to be released in theaters in April, around the first part of April, and uh, they decided to change the game up a little bit. I've got my reasons why I think they did that, but let's, uh, let's get your thoughts on what did this surprise you? Who wants to dive in and talk about this, uh, this kind of shock? Well, I think a lot it surprised people. everyone. I, no one saw it. I, mean, I, I knew there was something out there. Like you said, I thought it was coming later in the spring or early summer, and then I saw the spot, and I thought, whoa. I didn't stay up. You stayed up and watched yes. it, right? Yes. So you're sleep deprived. Today, oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I on the other hand, watched it at work today at my desk. <laughs> well, I don't know if I can. Can I say I watch Netflix? Like, it's it was part of the show. It's, it's part, part of the show. Of the show. <laughs> this is part of my job. To, and then yeah, Christian, that's my excuse. Christian also watched it after mm -hmm. the Super Bowl, so we both yeah. watched it. We were we were pretty sleep deprived yeah. and watched it. But uh, I'd been following calls. I. I knew that they were coming out with another one because as soon as 10 Cloverfield Lane came out, I was like, oh, I want to see another one of these. And like, there had been talks for several years about it. And then like, I kept seeing that like it was supposed to come out in April. And I was like, I've literally heard nothing about right. this movie coming out. And so then the Super Bowl ad dropped. And I was like, well, cool, it's going to be on Netflix. And then a second one dropped in the fourth quarter. And I was like, wait, it's out there like now? Yeah. And so it was really interesting. And all the Cloverfield movies have done something a little different with their marketing. And it was cool to see what they did this time. Yeah. So did the movie drop right as the... They went to the next program or when Brady sulked off the field? Well, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. I know they said as soon as the game was over was when they were going to drop it. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure what the time frame was. But okay. um, as soon as they had the first trailer, I went and looked. And it said, you know, coming after the big game. Right, right. And so I went back not long after the – I watched the trophy presentation. And then I, mm -hmm. I went and it was already available. Um so, yeah, it, really interesting what they decided to do. I think the reason, I'll go ahead and tell you why I think the reason they decided to go, not to theaters, but to Netflix, is because the last two space dramas that were, were kind of big-name space dramas did not succeed mm -hmm. well at the box office. Um, Life was one of those. Right. Um, it brought in $38 million. And then Passengers uh, brought in $100 million, which was okay, but it didn't make its money back here. And so I think maybe they said, you know. Well, even if you want to look at Alien Covenant. Well, Alien Covenant, yeah. But it's, you know, that was one that, uh, was that a space drama? I guess it well, was, yeah. So uh, unless you're kind of the Star Wars kind of films or the Star Trek kind of films, uh, you're not having as much success with these space dramas. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why they said, let's go a different route. Do you have a feeling? Yeah, feeling? but you know, it all starts with the script. Yeah. If, the, if life had a better script, if Passengers okay. had a better script, and maybe better marketing. Okay. Know, uh, people find good films. Okay. Usually, I think. All right. Well, let's let's talk about this movie. Uh, who wants to give a storyline on this? I don't have a clue what the story. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I've got like a brief uh, one a brief, or two give sentences. Give me a brief one or two sentence So line. basically, uh, Cloverfield tell, uh, the Cloverfield paradox tells the story of a crew in space attempting to save a uh, energy crisis that humanity is facing in the near future. And so they're testing this particle accelerator to try and fix the energy crisis. And then once the uh, accelerator experiment kind of goes awry, then they face some pretty pretty weird circumstances, yeah. I guess you could say. Yeah, weird circumstances all across the board. Don't you think it was a little bit of a patchwork of a lot of things? Yeah, yeah. And Event I, Horizon, Solaris. Even light. Uh, sunrise, what, I think. Sunshine. Light. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I threw in some other ones. I said Apollo 13 meets Fringe. Because you had got to throw a fringe in there. was a scene there. that was very reminiscent of Alien. Uh, Alien, absolutely. Uh, a little bit of gravity thrown in. And, yeah. and there was also uh, a nod to Sam Raimi um, in the living, uh, the, uh, the Evil Dead films. <laughs> with, uh, there's, there's a, we'll just say that there is a, um, an arm that's missing an that shows up. Yeah. And uh, if anybody's seen any of the Sam Raimi films. The film last before, time I remember seeing it, it's like sitting in the corner doing this, <laughs> which I thought was funny. But it reminded me of thing on... Uh, the Adams Family. Oh, the Adams Family. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Adams Family. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's uh, yeah, what I like about these films. I'm not saying this film in particular. What I like about what the Cloverfield film, films um, have done is they're standalone. Mm -hmm. You don't have to watch the one before 
to appreciate the next one or right. to, to watch it. They're, they're all standalone. Right. Now, if you've seen the other ones, sure, there are these threads that connect them, mm -hmm. but you don't have to. They're very thin threads, though. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, it, yeah, they are. They are, but but maybe that's... I mean, Abrams that's, is lost, too, you know, and you know how that <laughs> right. came so, up. Well, and it's just such a different feel, I think, because it's so cool to me that you're really getting so many different perspectives of the same story. Right. Um, to, to an extent, you could almost, like, compare it to the gospel where you have like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all telling the story of Christ in the Bible. And in the same way, I feel like this Cloverfield franchise, we're getting the same story, but we're always getting it in a different location, different right. characters, and even a different genre of filmmaking each time. And I mean, that's been really cool for me to see. Yeah, and I'll tell you what I think this would work better as. I think it'll work better as a TV series. Mm. I can agree could, with that. Where you could do that, you could look at these different, um, you know, concepts and different kind of episodes of different people experiencing the same thing. The Walking Dead has tried to do that with, with kind of a spinoff that's looking at another whole other set of characters. Mm -hmm. um, and so and I, I don't think, think that it, one's working, but that's another, No, that one's not working. But, but I do think something like this, almost as a, not necessarily an anthology, but you're looking at the, the broader text of this Cloverfield concept, but you're looking at these other characters within different episodes tying it together. Right. I think that would work better. Right. Um, so what are your thoughts on this? What worked and what didn't work for you? <laughs> Boy, the crickets are just really out there. I thought the characters were somewhat generic. Yeah. Uh, the, the lead character, of course, had a backstory. The others mainly didn't, I don't think. Um, I'd, I'd, what do the worms have to do with anything? How did the gyroscope gyroscope get where it was <laughs> what does it mean i don't know i don't know if it was just there for shock and awe yeah, yeah. did you find relevance or logic to those two instances well personally i i had trouble it it very much felt like you were saying like this hodgepodge of events and i almost felt like since it was a paradox they used that as like their throwaway yep. for for any scene that they wanted to include they can say that it happened because they're in an unusual situation yep and, that, and, and that's exactly what it was. I, 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 those things didn't bother me because they, they set it up by going, okay, now our universes are a little twisted. And because they're twisted, so is it we normal can... for the other multiverse to have worms, <laughs> for people to have worms? Is that an everyday yeah, occurrence you know, for them? I don't... Uh, you know, the, the, the word, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, humans, we get tapeworms occasionally. Uh, I, I don't think I, it's, I haven't, I haven't I'm not sure it was a tapeworm. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying they just had I, bad fish? <laughs> I will say, yeah, that bad sushi. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll definitely say I had my problems with it, but watching it as, if this were a film that were just kind of on Netflix and just released for Netflix with that intention, I'd say, yeah, you know what? It was okay for what it was. Mm -hmm. And so my initial rating for it was actually a lot higher and then the more I thought about it, I'm like, nah, it's, 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 you know, it's definitely not one I'm going to go back and revisit again. Um, it is interesting seeing, as you said, um, different genres playing around the whole Cloverfield thing, even if it's loosely tied and the threads are loosely tied. Um, they are connected. And sometimes they don't have to be completely connected with, you know, in your face, the, the you know, the, the big billboards or the, right. you know the big placards or a big you know flashing sign that says i'm a cloverfield movie i'm a cloverfield movie right. um but I, I ultimately my 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 revised rating for this was like a c plus it was um i thought it was okay it wasn't great it wasn't horrible i'm glad i saw it there were some interesting things but it's not one that i can highly highly recommend to a lot of people hey who's the guy with the arm the arm? I, mean, I know most guys have arms, yeah, but you know uh, what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have the cast I listing. like him a lot. Yeah. I've seen him in three or four things. First, I think in Bridesmaids a few years back. Yeah. He's just a very likable guy. Yeah, you'll see a lot of faces you'll recognize, that's for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. what, what's your rating? My rating was actually a C plus. so okay. you and I were on the same page yep. here. Um, plus? C, C plus? C plus. Okay. Um, and I, I would like to point out, I really liked the music by Bear McCreary. He yeah. did mm -hmm. 10 Cloverfield Lane, so yeah. he's been in this franchise, but he also did Battlestar Galactica. He also does Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. It was Walking well. Dead, yeah. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., if you've watched that yep. show any. Um, so he's starting to make a name for himself, and the music was really good. I said that it was like this blend of Interstellar and Gravity combined. Mm -hmm. um, really good tension music. Sound design was really mm -hmm. solid as well. Mm -hmm. in this. I thought the effects were okay. Yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd read uh, something this morning. How they were talking about the cheesy effects uh, were so I, I I thought they were serviceable. To me, the only there was only one one effect that I would call a cheesy effect, and I'm not going to give anything away. But it was the uh, the ship was kind of uh, 
molding with a character. Yeah. Mm. Um, and uh, was kind of taking over a character's face and body, and that was a little, little cheesy. Right. And and that was kind of like what Sam Raimi used to do with some of his films, mm -hmm. and that was kind of a throwback to that, I think. So what was your rating for this? I'd probably go with a C. C? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good deal. Uh, so that movie is called The Cloverfield Paradox. It is available on Netflix now. Well, we've got uh, got a little bit of time for.